The first time I stepped behind the camera as a director, I felt terrified and exhilarated. I both had found the thing that I really, really wanted to do with my life and that it might kill me. <laughs> and then I got a migraine that night and went to the hospital. Hi, Ben Affleck here with The Hollywood Reporter and I'm about to share, believe it or not, my Hollywood firsts. The first movie I saw that made me want to make movies was probably Star Wars, 1977, which I saw I don't know, 20 times, took the subway to, I was five years old. This was at a time when it was perfectly normal to take the subway as a five-year-old by yourself. But I do remember on that same train, coming back from that same theater, having seen Back to the Future when I was 10 and being very sure that that was, that was the best movie I'd ever seen. And I'd probably never ever see another movie that was any better than that. It's still movies that make me want to make movies. Like I remember seeing Do the Right Thing and thinking like, you can make, kind of make your own movie. And then I saw Malcolm X and thought like, you can change the world with movies. Every time I see Paul Thomas Anderson's movies, I want to be a director, or, or David Fincher's movies, or um, Coron's movies, or Inyarich's movies, or Catherine Bigelow's movies, or, you know, Sean Hader's movie, I wanted, you know, I was like, Sean Hader was my, in my mom's sixth grade class. It's amazing that now I find myself in this position where I'm used to, like, looking up at all the older people, and now <laughs> all the younger people making movies that are inspiring me, and it's, it's really thrilling. The last movie I saw that made me uh, want to make movies was Michael B. Jordan's movie, Creed, which is spectacular. I mean, movies have inspired me throughout my life. The first audition I went on, actually, I was very young. I had the unusual um, result of getting the part. Um, when I auditioned for a children's television show called Voyage of the Mimi, I was eight years old. When I got it, I wasn't even that surprised because I thought that, oh, like, you go in for it, you probably get it, you know? I, I didn't get the next 4,736 auditions, so I quickly learned you don't, you don't get them all. First thing I splurged on was an Avid, believe it or not. I just was really interested in nonlinear editing. So then when I made money, I, uh, I bought an Avid, but nobody wanted me to cut their movie. So it <laughs> sat there idle. The first movie of mine that my kids actually sat through together was Armageddon because they they like movies where they can make fun of me um and they really liked the idea that i was an astronaut or an oil driller or and they just found the whole thing kind of preposterous but they loved it they loved the fun of it but the first movie that i cared about you know whether or, or, or really interested in what my children thought was was good will hunting which i watched with now two of my three kids. It was interesting for me to watch them watch the movie and see how different their childhood is from what my childhood looked like. And to wonder about what that must seem like to them and how distant from their life and reality they were engaged and, and interested. And that was like on an artistic level, probably the most gratifying experience of my life. The first time I stepped behind the camera as a director, Gone Baby Gone, I felt terrified and exhilarated and as though I both had found the thing that I really, really wanted to do with my life and that it might kill me. <laughs> and then I got a migraine that night and went to the hospital. I don't consider any of that other stuff that I did prior to that really directing because I hardly knew what the job was. So really, and one of the reasons I was so terrified was both that I knew how big the scope of the job of directing was, I knew how hard it would be, I knew that the rest of my, my life, my ability to, the opportunities to work in the entertainment business kind of depended on whether or not that movie worked or it was probably over for me. Yeah, I had just had my first kid and I really wanted to say something that was meaningful and that would be lasting and resonate. And I had been afraid to even like give voice to those ambitions because I thought feeling that way even was sort of pretentious or I had been conditioned to believe that anyway. And, uh, so I was scared, really scared, but happy and thrilled, and I loved it. First time I knew I nailed a job would have to be, gosh, embarrassingly late in life. I mean, I'm somebody who is very much afflicted with the kind of knowing exactly how I want to play the scene the minute we wrap, or the minute we finish for the day, or the minute I leave the audition. Most of my life as an, as an actor, and then even as a director, was about trying to find out how to get that feeling that I had when I left the room before I did the scene. The first time I talked to Michael Jordan about making air was just 
you know, it was a very simple kind of, I'm not going to make this movie if Michael Jordan doesn't want me to. Um, and I'm going to make sure that if I do make this movie, whatever is important to Michael Jordan about this story be included in this story. It's not a history. It's not a documentary. I didn't, I wasn't trying to go back and nail all the kind of minutia of who said what, and that wasn't what it was about. It was about him and his family and the effect at, at, at what he meant to the world and really. And so he was the person who I want, whose blessing I needed and wanted. The whole thing hinged on that. It's a wild thing to sit down across from a, a legend and a hero, you know, and to even think you could take on the mantle of telling this person's story, who the person is so larger than life, you know, and so important in so many ways. Michael had one thing that he wanted um, that he was ab absolutely certain of, which was that Viola Davis uh, had to play his mother. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we're not doing the movie if, if Viola doesn't do it. And um, as a result, actually uh, kind of discovering that the Viola actually is the protagonist of the movie. Viola was amazing and she makes the movie what it is. She's unbelievable. And that's one of the wonderful things about this job, if you're lucky enough to have it, is that you meet incredible people who, if you listen to, can teach you things that, you know, you know, just having access to and, and, and listening to them is, is like an enormous blessing. That was me, Ben Affleck, with The Hollywood Reporter, sharing my Hollywood first. It's over now. Go home now, guys, leave. Thanks for watching. Thanks very much.